Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on an oil painting study. I have been really wanting to put more time into figuring out how to oil paint. So I want to do more studies like this where the, the concept is something that doesn't take a lot of time to sketch or to come up with rather than a full painting where I have to come up with a concept that I really like and then get into spending a long time on the sketch. So I decided just to go right in with one of my favorite things to draw, a skull. And I put the skull on top of a pile of lemons because I love lemons. And it was right after Inktober when I was painting this actually. So I was feeling very self-indulgent at that point where I wanted to just like reward myself and paint some things that I really loved. So for this one, I had a very clear reference that I was painting right off of for the skull. That was so pleasant. There were a lot of things that as I was working on this, I knew that I would have to figure out moving forward when I work on my my pieces, my, my normal pieces, because when I was working with this reference, it was really easy just to focus on making sure that I was trying to emulate all of the details as well as I could in the way that I wanted it to. But when it comes time to, to doing it into more of a stylized approach, I definitely want to get more details into my work. That's that's one of my big goals moving forward, but I also still want it to feel like my own thing, my own style, my own vision of how I'm interpreting that reference. So while I was working on this one, it felt really great to be able to just focus on, on that, on the details in the reference and just make them happen. But it was making me a little bit wary that I know that when it comes time to doing something that's a little bit more involved with with my own creativity, I guess, it, it won't be quite so seamless. But, but I think that that was helpful for me to be able to work on this and realize what things were working really well and potentially things in the future that I might need to pay a little bit more attention to. But anyways, I uh, I was working on this in kind of a, a scattered approach. I haven't really nailed down my my go-to approach for laying down the darks and the lights and how I want to blend them together and and just the the order of things going into an oil painting. So I, I think I'm a lot better now, even just like a one one painting farther along than this one at having kind of a, a rhythm to it. But in this one, I was jumping around from lights to darks and different sections and areas. And I think that uh, moving forward, I would, I would like to have a little bit more of a conscious decision-making kind of approach where I maybe always put the darks down and then the lightest lights and then build up in between and then blend out. And that's basically what I'm doing as I'm building up this skull. I'm looking at s little sections of the skull and then I'm finding the areas that have the darkest darks. So so like on parts of it where I'm working on the where the nose hole is, there that would be the darkest spot for that section. And then the, the peaks, the highest points that are hitting the most amount of light, those would be the lightest points. And I would put both of those in and then I would start building up the layers in between. And I think that that kind of a thought process was helpful for me. Like I was saying, I think I'd like to be able to to work in where I get all of the darks for that area in and then all of the lights. But, but I think that that helped just being able to break it down into a segment rather than trying to take in the entire skull for me, breaking it down into these little chunks worked way better. And then I was able to put down the values and then I blended in the places that needed it. I specifically try to make sure that I was focusing on areas that had softer blends as opposed to others that would have more of a cast shadow kind of a look to the shadow. And what I mean by that is that some areas, if the light is hitting an object that's sticking out more, the light will catch on that and then you'll see a very defined edge to the shadow, but other areas, if it's a curvature of the skull, then you're going to get this soft blend between the dark and the light. So that was one thing that can really make a big difference on, on how good a piece looks is paying attention to those differing ways that the shadow blends in or doesn't blend into the areas around it. So 
So those are the things that I was thinking of most when I was building this up were the, lar the lightest, there we go, and the darkest areas. And also how does that shadow, how does that difference between the two delineate? Do they, do they blend? Do they have harsh lines? And I think one of the things that I am still fighting with, I think a lot of us still fight with it, and it probably comes back from time to time is that your brain likes to make patterns and figure things out and it thinks it knows what things look like, but it doesn't always know what it looks like in that scenario. So when I was painting this, I was trying to really pay attention to the really little details that normally I would just disregard. They would fade out into the background because they wouldn't be as noticeable. Things like there's a little bit of texture up in the top right quadrant of the skull. And uh, that's normally a detail that I wouldn't even pay any attention to. But, but because I was trying to really focus on figuring out how to make this skull look lifelike and how could I learn the most from this, I was paying attention to that kind of thing. And I was noticing how, how that texture actually looked, not just how I might go about adding texture, quote unquote. So I, I did try to make sure that I was emulating that a little bit more rather than my, what my go-to approach might be, which would be to take a bristly kind of a brush and just dab it right on and just speckle some paint on there, which can be a great option for adding texture like that. But I wanted to try to achieve something that looked closer to the reference. So I found that I was, I was really paying a lot more attention to these things like that or to the, say like the, there's this really close difference between a few different values inside of where the eyes would go, the eye holes, where you can see some bone farther back, but it is so close to that darkest dark in there. But I, I wanted to make sure that I tried to preserve that so that if you look closely, you could see that, that difference where normally I would simplify that out. I would just create a much darker shape overall. And I, I don't want to I don't want to do that anymore. I want it to be very thoughtful. What things am I simplifying? What things am I taking out and what things really should be there? And I think in a lot of cases in the past, my decision making for that kind of an element just happened from, from laziness or disinterest or fear that I wouldn't be able to make it look right. So then if I don't put it in there, then it can't look wrong. And I'm feeling very excited about moving towards a place where I can make very definitive decisions about things like that and to know that I want to have it in there and how to do it. And then it's going to look so much better because I'm making these conscious choices. But, but yeah, that is a long-term process for me, I think, because there's been a lot of bad habits that I've ingrained into myself as I have been working over the years. So so really, I think just the first thing is paying attention to those details and getting a better gauge of when those details should be there and when they should not be there. And the blue in the background was probably the, well, maybe the second funnest. I loved painting the skull. I really enjoyed that. But being able to just go in and blend out different values of this blue together and just play with the oil paints, that was really very fun and very easy because... I just made it easy on myself where I just had a soft gradient of that darker blue at the bottom up to a lighter blue at the top. So it was really just, just the fun of playing with oil paints at that point and just putting down some color. I actually think that once this, this layer dries, cause this is all in one layer, once it's done, I think I'm going to go back over the entire background and paint it into something a little bit more along the lines of what I actually want my art to look like, the, the end goal for my overall style, I think it'll probably end up being a much moodier, darker, atmospheric background. But, but in the meantime, I, I did get a lot of, a lot of good learning from, from painting the background like this, painting it like that and painting the lemons. So I'm really happy that I could get that practice with the oil paints. And then when it comes time to adding, which I think probably will just end up being like this blendy 
kind of a loose thing in the background. It'll look better as a piece itself, but I still would have gotten much more mileage from this painting. But that's it for today. I loved painting this. I really love painting with oils. I'm excited to really figure them out and practice with them more. Uh, but I do have a link to my art shop that's in the description below. And I do have a bunch of the originals from Inktober that I didn't have listed up at the shop. Those are listed now. So if you want to check that out and go see what's available, then again, that's down below. I also have my prints and my pins and my stickers and all that stuff over there. But I also have a link to my Patreon and I do want to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons over there. You guys are incredible. The support that you give me helps me make art every single day and it helps me also to do these videos. Thank you guys for that. Uh, but that's it for this week. So I will be back next week with another art video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you then.